Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is uh, going to be um, on uh, Bishop Matthew Kuka and his statement to the United States Congress, where, of course, he spoke with regards to religious freedom here in Nigeria and uh, who, of, uh, well, how both Christians and Muslims have been on the receiving end of uh, the failures of government to address the insecurity crisis in the country. The current uh, government uh, has all also responded to it and accused Bishop Kuka of uh, falsehood with intents to discredit the administration. But there are certain details in the uh, address to the U.S. Congress and some of the things that he said that, you know, I think we're, we're pretty um, um, interested. We're speaking once again this morning with uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, the publisher of CKN News. Good morning. Thanks for joining us and welcome back, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me back. Okay. All right. So quickly, let's get your thoughts on, um, you know, the ad address by Bishop uh, Matthew Kuka to the U.S. Congress. Some of the things that he said and how he stated uh, the um, attack on Christianity in Nigeria, religious freedom, and um, also did mention that both Christians and Muslims have been on the receiving end, um, even if he pointed mostly concerning, uh, you know, reverend fathers and bishops and the likes that have been attacked and kidnapped and some of them even killed. Um, what are your thoughts with regards to the address in the first place? Thank you once again. Um, first and foremost, uh, there's nothing new in what uh, Kuka has said. What he said is obvious, and this is something that is known to in Nigeria, both home and abroad. So uh, he's talked about Nepoli. That we know well um, that um, a lot of people have spoken about, about the government. Don't forget, uh, Zakon Mar was one of those that spoke about the uh, bishop in the podium with this apartment. And then Mar came out categorically. Uh, he's from the heart and he's of Muslim, so um, that is one. Then he also spoke at this said attack um, going on in North. Um, um, a Muslim, a Christian, a clergyman being uh, kidnapped. We talked about how four were kidnapped at one point, some of states, three were released, then one was killed. He also talked about the need for the agency, international agencies to refocus their attention in donating their native to Nigeria and focus more on the issue of widows, issue of orphans, and um, the vulnerable uh, within our society. Then you also talk about um, the government not being enough in making Nigerians um, uh, feel at home, especially for whatever they have said that. And uh, then they talk about uh, his area of frustration, he said, it, don't forget his age of, he's a clergyman. So when he talks, he talks about his uh, domain, and he spoke about the persecution going on among uh, 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 some Christians in Iran. Don't also forget, and because most of them are not Nigerians, uh, we are need to remember that from the president of the this is the United States president and the president, former president, Obama, the president, uh, Donald, um, uh, yes, uh, um, the former president of the United States Donald of Trump. America, raised that issue with the president, Nigeria president, who I have to remember publicly, yeah. that he had to raise that issue. I think that he had that so many Christians being prosecuted in Nigeria, I should do something out of it. So I don't see anybody coming out now. Pretending not to be a casket by the Koka for what is as if you is something that is entirely um, untrue. That to me is very, very common. Okay, Mr. Wandu, um, major things that um, Reverend Kuka said, I want to point out um, his statements regarding the person of President Muhammad Buhari and his leadership style, as well as his commentary on democracy in Nigeria. Now, I hear a quote from Bishop Kuka. He said, General Buhari didn't make Boko Haram happen. But the fact that today the northwest and north central and literally the entire length and breadth of Nigeria have been invaded by bandits, herdsmen and killers of people, you know, go on to show that uh, the government seems to be either helpless or almost uninterested in dealing decisively with these people. Do you agree with these comments that the federal government and uh, the presidency is either, you know, uninterested or helpless in dealing with um, insecurity? 
Well, I might not believe that uh, they are totally helpless. What I believe in there is that they don't have a political to what they have to do. Um, the issue of bandit is being uh, is beaten with kid blow by the government, especially the issue of um, felony heads um, that are married everywhere, killing people, taking up people's fantasy. And most people believe that the language of the president does seem to be um, uh, uh, make a government hard to show that most of these issues are best. Though he came to say that everybody is taking 47 should be short. But don't forget that most of them are not, there is a need for the president to speak on issue of uh, this headband. They don't come at it at, at rightly on it. Don't for, also look at the issue of uh, Kenya going across, not just not only in the northwest, the uh, north, but also in the south. But presently, we just, uh, as of today, the news conference is that the bandits kidnapped about 121 students in 120 now because of those students have come back from best school in Kaduna are demanding 6 million naira for those students to be released. Those that are uh, now from the, um, the private university in Kaduna, parents have to rally around to millions and millions of naira for those kids to be released. There is also the invasion of um, uh, an Islamic school there. That almost uh, about 200 children we have been away as in that all. What we is that it's not just the will, the capacity, and also the body weight of the presidency to be able to handle this. Which let us not to some extent people say that um, we are, um, people are piling a certain um, set of the country. But the fact is that the fact even the president himself came out to say that we are, in Casina where he was from. But the governor of that state came out crying that needs help, that they're also ready his state. So it's a general law, which is, we believe that the government is there to do this. I would be able to do this. Okay, look at the last few weeks. So somebody, a, a, a clergyman, Islamic faith, have been going around with this, but it's not that where they are. It's obvious that we know from mm. the movement and the direction that they're coming out with. That means the only actually. We are these guys. What are we to to be able to make sure that this are that? And they only are caught. Many of them have been prosecuted. Have you seen anybody in court? Have you seen the being in court? That is what we're talking about. Okay, Mr. Iwonjo, I want us to relate this to another statement by Bishop Matthew Kuka. He says, and I quote, What is significant about the situation in Nigeria is that we are in a democracy that is very weak, with weak structures, inefficiencies, and deficiencies. Do you agree with Bishop Kuka's assessment of democracy in Nigeria? There's a difference between democracy and civilian rule. What we in Nigeria is civilian and not the most. My sister, I remember when I said school. I, I, I'm sure you remember the definition of democracy when we were taught in public school. Government of the people, the people are my people. The government we are in, the president and the government we are is it for the people, it's by the people. Hmm. So what we are having, we should be able to distinguish between civilian and democracy. We are not practicing democracy as those that found democracy and those that like that came up with that thing. That is not democracy. What we are practicing is What was only done is transiting from history to civilian rule. The tenets of democracy have not practiced, they have not enshrined in our constitution. It has been enshrined because we have the kind of things we have. Do you, hmm. with our leaders, we be uh, as if they are errors? We are national assembly come up with an election act that also removed the independent or dependent national commission. The independence is to, to determine how Nigerians vote, how that election can be trusted. Right, we are not Mr. asking Wando. independent election commission how, how to go behind to wait for NCST and also to wait for National Assembly be able to do their job if they can be able to ascertain whether election votes can be transmitted or not. All that right, Chris Wando. is not the definition of independent. That is my independent national, uh, national election commission. That is not my definition of democracy. What we are practicing now is severe rule. And let's not deceive ourselves that having democracy. All right, Chris Wando. Uh...
Uh, thank you very much. Thank I, uh, you. I was going to throw in the importance of the angle that uh, Bishop Kuka also mentioned, that it is not just Christians that are being persecuted, even if that was, you know, a majority of what he said. But he also mentioned that, you know, both ends and both religions are, you know, majorly on the receiving end of the, the violence. Uh, Chris Wando, thank you very much for your time and for speaking yes, with us uh, you, again this morning. That is the narrative. Why is why I'm very, very uh, annoyed this man issued at the present time by um, the son of the Grand uh, Shield. He made a statement look like if the Takuka was talking about Christianity. That is what I mean. I'm talking about um, in movie. That was a woman said, talk in general terms and also talk about Muslims and also Christians. That is what it was very, if you look at the statement issued by Gary Shield. The tendency and what the narrative was pushing that he was just talking about it, and which is wrong. And just a one, he was saying there that there's been in the constitution that where it was written that there must be a parity between Christian and Muslim in the appointment by the by the president. You can you imagine that it's all quite unfortunate. All right. Thank you once again. We wish you a very peaceful uh, and eventful Salah celebrations and public holidays. Looking forward to speaking with you Thank again. You very much. Thanks. Bye. All right. This is where we wrap up the conversation and the program this morning. We wish all our viewers a happy celebrations, happy Salah. Um, if you missed out on any of these discussions, including with the former CBN governor, Professor Chukumar Soludo, uh, you can find it on our YouTube and uh, well, our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And uh, Plus TV Africa as well. And we have a new YouTube channel in case you're not following us on there already. It's at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Thank you very much for allowing us to be a part of your day. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Gi Ogbonga. Bye-bye.